Hey there, fellows. Now, since it's really cold outside, you gotta think about preheating your engine. To make it easier to start, we've already tried a number of recipes. You'd recall us heating the coolant and the motor oil. So yeah, we did all of that, but the most fun we had was last year, when we tried, um, heating oil uh, with, um, using a magnetron from a microwave oven. Yeah, that was a very interesting idea indeed. It worked pretty well, though I wouldn't say it wowed us. It was definitely warming the oil, though. And now a new idea has occurred to us. You probably know that this is an induction cooker, and the only thing that gets hot is the metal it's heating. And so, without resorting to open flames, let's try this thing. And maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to warm the oil enough to start the engine. Okay, let's get stuck right into it. I suggest we immediately try and test the concept on the bench. The stove works, the oil pan is made of metal, so this should work. We place it right here, and what do we got? The temperature... 21.7, nice. About the same all over the oil pan. Okay, now let's turn this on. What are we warming? Water? Soup? Let's try soup. And let's have a look. Oh, it switches on a timer. Two minutes. Is that gonna be enough to heat soup? Holy cow! The setting is way too high. Stop, stop, stop. Did you see what it was doing? Straight away the oil literally began to boil. Yeah, I mean, the temperature jumped to 48 degrees. And it only took a few seconds. Yeah, this is just dangerous. Like, very dangerous. Because, well... That's not good for the oil, because... It's gonna burn, be losing its properties. Okay, so I've dialed it back. Let's see. Right around... 50 in some spots, 51 in others. This is at a low power setting. Like, really low. Even so, this is getting hot seriously fast. Things are happening. Yeah, this is quick to get hot. We were at 64 degrees, so that's an increase of 14. Not seeing anything on the soup setting. What if I set it to water? Same story. Soup is going to produce a lot of steam. So this is the lowest power setting available, and... Um, so far, while I was doing this check, the temperature blew past 100 Celsius. This is an induction cooker, so obviously it powers up. I mean, it's got plenty of power. And uh, whatever is being heated gets hot real quick. Okay, guys, as you can see, this is quite an effective thing. And the important thing... It's currently at 104. Is it cooling off? No, it's 115 in that spot. Depends on where you point this. And uh, so, yeah, the oil pan in this area should be... Yeah, it's not too hot, but down here... The hotter, the closer to the stovetop. Now I remove this. And this has gotten hot because of the metal it was heating. From when the oil pan was still on here. Yeah, this works. Okay, I guess that now we just need to tear this apart. And uh, make an attempt at getting all of its guts fitted to an engine. As for what sort of engine that'll be and how we get there, we'll just wing it as we go. Let's do this. We fit an induction stove to an oil pan. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian.
So check this out. Here is the car. We're about to start warming the engine. The oil, I mean. It's actually gotten warmer outside. Almost 32 degrees. Still pretty cold outside, though. And so here's the deal. Once again, we're gonna do battle with a frozen engine. The oil, yeah, we're experimenting with this car, the one we made portal gears for. It's just that it's higher off the ground, you got better access underneath it. Okay, now let's have a look at the oil. Come on. Slowly forming a drop. Let's see if it falls. Still waiting. Nope. Ain't happening, but okay. Anyway, so engine temperature is minus 32 degrees, and so... Maybe give the oil pan a hit? Minus 32 and change, very good. Now, obviously it's super thick. But let's give the engine a turn and see whether this thing has any uh, will to live in it. Now we look on. Yeah, that'll work. No, that's enough. But now let's try that interesting preheating method we came up with. Right here we have um, the stovetop itself. We have the ceramic portion, the coil. The mounting bracket for it is rudimentary, there we are. We slip it in and it presses tightly up against the oil pan. And the tighter the fit, the better it's gonna work. We've brought out an extension cord. And the plug is here inside the cabin. It is located underneath the seat. Doesn't matter whether it's here or inside the engine bay. We plug it in and over there we have a... The control panel for the engine preheater. We can see that all of the lights are blinking. There it is right there. This is the second cooker, we burn the first one. Should we switch it on? Okay, I'm gonna switch it on then. And immediately that activated warm-up mode. That translates to minimal power output. And the pots and pans will be slowly getting warm. Now, we don't want to put an enormous amount of heat into the oil. We need the temperature increase to be gradual, or the warm to slowly spread over the oil pan and uh, so on. We want it to liquefy, but we don't want it to burn. Now let's go observe the pace at which the process is occurring. Let's take this outside. So look here, we are slowly, and I really mean slowly. No, it's above freezing in some spots. 16 centigrade even. Holy cow, 7 degrees. 28, oh wow. Over here I've got the max rating. Temperature is above freezing. I can feel the warm radiating from it. But I suggest we wait, because it's not going to be a super fast process. Now here's the big question. What should you actually heat, a motor oil or perhaps coolant? Antifreeze or whatever you want to call it? Go ahead and pause the video and tell us what you think. Do you get a better effect by heating a coolant or motor oil? I'm curious to see what you have to say. But now we're in the process of heating oil. And uh, what do we got? Are we getting anywhere? I'm sure we are. Let me grab this thing. And take some readings. All right, 20. But yeah, it's 20 in some spots. 10 in others. I don't get it. Let's wait for a bit more. Fifteen minutes later. It's getting colder, but all right. Right, let's give the stove a hit. Hey. Where are you at? Let me just... It is quite warm to the touch. 
Not freezing at all. What is cooldown? I wouldn't say that to the touch it feels like... No, not like it's bearable. But you can feel that it's warm. I guess we need to dial it up. Because our reasoning was that the induction would make the oil like, um... That the stovetop would, uh, well... You do remember the bench test, right? When it immediately got hot. It is not the same story out here in the cold. Let's wait a bit more then. After another five minutes. What do we got? Very nice. We're getting somewhere. I'm seeing 46, 55 degrees. It's different depending on which spot you hit. But the oil is hot. It is hot. But how hot is it? Oh, okay. Why is there so little of it? But it has liquefied. It's not even sticking to the dipstick. Take a look at that. It's nice and runny like you'd want. Okay, so we'll let it warm some more. And then we give the engine a turn. To get a bit of circulation going. The engine should... Let's give it a turn. For the warm oil to lap the system, the pump will push it through, and the engine should be happier to turn. It'll have an easier time. Come on, go for it. Say what? I mean... It's definitely happier. But we're gonna go ahead and wait and allow it to get even warmer. All right, so a bit more time has transpired. Let's see. Oh, I see smoke. Nice. That's pretty warm. Let's try starting it. Yeah, let it rip. Yeah, it works. Spoke too soon. <laughs> oh, right, the distributor is in the wrong position. I totally forgot that it was thrown off when we turned the cold engine. We need to adjust the ignition. How about now? Now it's running well. And there you go. Did you turn off the preheater? You can do that. And so there you have it, guys. You'd think that... The engine was obviously having quite a hard time turning over. What with the frozen motor oil? But once you get it warm, you get it flowing. Even the warm oil, but I mean, it was really hot, actually. You would have seen it getting up to 80 degrees. Once it starts flowing, the engine has a much easier time turning over. Hey, it's just motor oil, right? But as a matter of fact, what's the better option, heating the oil or the engine coolant? I actually really want to read what you guys have to say on the matter. Somebody's definitely going to write that both components matter. That your best bet would be to store your car in a warm garage. Yeah, that's a great idea. But unfortunately, not everybody has that option. Anyway, so... Let's assume that I don't want to make a fire underneath my car. Instead, I can just try something like this. 
If you take a simple electric cooker, it's going to get really hot, and it's going to be producing a lot of hot air. You probably run the risk of melting something with it, but an induction-type stove, it's going to get the job done warming just the oil pan. And the interesting thing is that it actually worked. And uh, quite well at that. Of course, you don't have to mutilate it like we did. You can just place it. And even if the oil pan is slightly uneven and uh, you're not getting good contact, but at the end of the day, uh, it worked. It got the motor oil nice and warm, and that is good. And that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. Yeah, we're freezing our asses off out here. Catch you guys later. Let's go to someplace warm. Did you turn the heat up? Did anybody make tea?